I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today I've got something pretty special to show you guys. I'm gonna take you on an early tour of the new Genesis G70 here in Sydney. A G70 is here in right-hand drive, and while final specifications are yet to be confirmed for the Australian market, this particular car is representative of a G70 that has every feature applied and will probably be quite like a trim that is eventually called Sport Ultimate when the car arrives in Australia, sitting at the top of a preferred range for Genesis Australia that includes two litre turbo models in base, sport and ultimate form and 3.3 litre twin turbo V6s in either sport or top shelf Sport Ultimate. The G70, if you're not completely aware of what this car is, is the second product from Hyundai's luxury offshoot Genesis. The first car, which was initially called the Hyundai Genesis and is now known as the G80, is longer than a BMW 5 Series, but the new G70 will compete squarely in BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class and Audi A4 territory. Later, it'll be joined by a range of SUVs, but for now, the G70 carries the hopes of the Genesis side. A particular issue for a brand like Genesis in a competitive market like Australia will be cutting through and generating interest and attention from buyers who would otherwise just buy a Mercedes C-Class. I spoke to the general manager of Genesis Australia, Peter Evans, about how he plans to generate that interest and prevent Genesis from going the way of some other luxury brands. And you can see that interview by clicking up here. What Genesis really needs, however, is good product. And from the outside, the Peter Schreyer design G70 looks the goods with relatively few derivative elements and an overall shape that I think presents as pretty attractive. While I do see some Alfa Romeo Giulia in the front headlights and a bit of BMW 2 Series at the back, I think that taken as a whole, the G70 presents a pretty fine form as a luxury sports sedan. This particular G70 looks especially good because it has the 3.3 litre twin turbo V6. All of the V6s will include this sort of sporty styling package as will the sport model among the two litre turbo range and they're differentiated by their unique 19 inch wheels in Michelin Pilot Sport 4 rubber and in the V6, the relatively Audi RS-like oval twin pipes at the back. Underneath, the G70 shares a platform with the Kia Stinger and both cars have the same 272 kilowatt, 510 newton meter twin turbo six. However, I think the lighter Genesis interpretation works better in the flesh with these more handsome conventional sedan lines and the less controversial rear end driving the G70 upmarket. But really, premium sedans are all about how they make you feel inside the car. So let's jump inside the G70 and see how its cabin is gonna stack up against key rivals. This G70 is a late stage pre-production car, so it hasn't yet reached its final level of build quality. But for a car that's not even yet at production level, this G70's interior quality is excellent. I actually think it's comparable to really high benchmarks in this segment like the Lexus IS, which is built really, really well. That starts with the materials that you touch. So this leather steering wheel is really soft and supple, a bit like the ones that you find in a BMW. This sort of faux leather stitch dashboard is really lovely and impressively that is actually standard across the range. So it isn't like cars like the BMW 3 Series where you get a cheaper dashboard at the lower end and you get a nice dashboard if you pay them more. Instead, in the G70, that level of luxury is standard. There's soft touch materials almost everywhere else you touch as well, including down here where the driver's leg rests, which you guys know is a feature I always look for in a car, and it's still really patchy even in the luxury sedan segment, so well done to Genesis there. These particular seats are excellent. These are the sport seats, and they get quilted leather. The ultimate model in the two litre range, like a non-sports model, that also gets quilted leather. However, the sports seats are quilted and they also have the sportier contrast piping as well. Having not driven a distance in the car yet, I can't comment too much on how supportive the seat will be over many hours of driving. However, sitting in it now, it feels great. It's soft, comfortable, supportive. The side bolsters inflate with air. And interestingly, when you change the car into its sport drive mode, 
the bolsters inflate automatically. I love that idea. What it means is, you know, you pop the car in sport and you start chucking it into the corners. The seat is already proactively prepared with tighter pumped up bolsters. That is a great idea. Naturally, the seats are heated, but they're also ventilated. And the leather quality actually just feels great. This feels like a really good, high quality, luxurious interior right off the bat. So I'm really satisfied with the seats. They do also have a really good range of electric adjustment as well, including sufficient under thigh support, which is always something I'm interested in, plus good lumbar adjustment for your back too. The overall presentation of the G70's interior is actually fairly unique, and that's quite difficult to do in the luxury segment because it feels like most ideas have already been done. Sure, we have seen this floating tablet style display in plenty of Mercedes products already. However, the Hyundai Stroke Genesis interpretation is actually a little bit different, and I actually really like the eye level height of it. Plus, like other uh, touchscreens that we've seen used in products that originate in the Hyundai group, it's actually really easy to use, which is great. The graphics are clear, there's really no learning curve, plus it's a touchscreen, so you can just reach out and touch it. There isn't a rotary style controller in the G70. That is something which I think would lift the cabin even further, but in its absence, it's good that there's a nice, crisp, clear, high resolution, easy to use touchscreen. Plus it does pack CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. All of those things link into a really impressive audio system. So we don't yet know what the stock audio system will be for the car, but high-end versions will use a really punchy 15 speaker Lexicon Hi-Fi stereo. That sounds really great. So we're excited to really get that pumping once we've got the car out on the road as well. In terms of practicality, it's also good. There's a wireless charging pad down here and just a single USB port in front of the driver. A second one would be good. However, you find that when you open this central cubby here, there's another powered USB port and a relatively deep space there to put more stuff into. Plus, of course, you have a nice damped lined glove box and you've also got door bins, although I wish they had some felt lining to them as well. The small sports sedan class isn't really known for having copious rear seat space. And also the Genesis G70 is rear wheel drive, which does mean that making a big seat is tough. But the space back here is acceptable. So for me at six foot, I've got enough headroom, despite the fact that this car has a sunroof. I do have actually good leg room sitting behind myself. It's really just my toe room, which is constricted, but I do have the driver's seat at its lowest possible setting. And to be honest, your friends will be fine back here, mostly because it's really comfortable. The seat base is angled high enough, which is a feature that I really miss in a lot of cars. And the supple quilted leather back here is nice and luxurious. I reckon I could do a couple of hours back here, no problem. And of course, if you've got kids, they will have enough room. I reckon you'd fit someone back here who is probably 6'2", so if you've got a really tall teenager, you might have to think about something else. However, the back of the G70 does have quite a few nice amenities. There are rear air vents, they'll be standard across the range. This particular car has heated rear seats. They may or may not come to Australia as this is quite a hot climate market. You do have a pull down center armrest here with two really substantial looking cup holders. This whole piece has actually a really nice weight to it. And there is a powered USB port here between the seats as well. There is a high driveline tunnel as well between the seats. That means that fitting uh, three people across will be a bit of an issue. So keeping it to two adults here in the back of the G70 is what I would probably recommend. A final leaderage on the size of the G70's boot is yet to be released. However, open up the uh, trunk on this car and what you'll find is that there's actually a relatively decent space back there. So for our medium sized suitcase, that slides in really easily. One of the reasons it's easy to put in is that there's actually a really limited lip between the opening of the boot and the floor. So it's not hard to slide your things in. The aperture itself is actually a little bit narrower than on some of this car's rivals, but the space goes back a long way. Now they're on this, this is a pre-production car. There's no releases to drop the backs of the seats. They may or may not come before this car is finalized, but you can drop those back seats from within the cabin to get a nice long space if you need it. There are a few extra features in this boot. So there's nets to keep uh, delicate items from moving around. There's also another storage space off to the side here. There is a spare tire underneath that boot floor rather than a hidden storage space. 
Now this will be as practical as a G70 gets because unlike some of this car's rivals from BMW, Mercedes, Audi, this will not be available in a station wagon, which is unfortunate because I actually think a G70 wagon would probably look pretty cool. While we aren't yet able to take the G70 out onto Australian roads because the local damping of the suspension and handling for our tastes remains a bit of a secret, we were able to start it up and have a listen to the V6. So, it sounds potent enough, though Genesis Australia were only keen to confirm a single mode exhaust at this point, that the potential is there for a bimodal exhaust i30N style later on. Sound aside, the V6 will be plenty powerful, able to dispatch a 0 to 100 sprint in 4.7 seconds. We're only getting the rear drive version here in Australia, which should mean it's plenty of fun given Hyundai's good understanding of the Australian preference for a more progressive stability control tune. A full suite of adaptive safety technologies will be standard across the range. Sports models feature an aggressive Pilot Sport 4 package with big 255-35 tyres at the back and 225-40s at the front, hiding beefy Brembo brakes. Inside, the dynamic characteristics of the car are customisable through the touchscreen via similar menus to what we saw on our recent drive of the i30N. There are settings available in this active engine sound menu, though it's not confirmed whether this will be available in Australia at launch. If it is, the sound of the engine in the cabin will be able to be softened or made louder via these options. However, the customization of the engine and gearbox response, the steering weight and the adaptive damper comfort levels will all feature on the Australian G70. In front of the driver is a further large colour display controlled through nice knurled buttons on the steering wheel. Fascinatingly, on the dynamic page, choices like a G-force meter and a lap timer are available. All in all, the G70 experienced in static form represents a luxury car with a great deal of promise. I'll reserve any bold judgments for after I've driven both the 2 litre and the V6, but in terms of design, quality and indicated feature set, the Genesis G70 ought to be highly competitive among the 3 Series class. And given the Hyundai Group's reputation for building reliable, durable, well-priced vehicles, there's every chance that Genesis will be a luxury upstart that can really make it here in Australia.